Fellow citizens of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, I bring you greetings from the interim government. Fellow Ambazonians, you wouldn't believe that it's more than, more than 12 months since we came out in numbers in keeping with the desire of our forebearers. The great Dr. Endele, the great Dr. Foncha, the great Dr. Joa, who are turning their graves in excitement that indeed the dream of having a free country for their people, for their children and their children's children, is finally coming true. We come to you from the interim government without a doubt, with a very heavy heart at a time when a country for the first time has registered a very scary refugee situation. Our people now move into Nigeria, neighboring countries in their thousands on a weekly basis. And what is worst is that this includes pregnant women, little children, as old as six months, all fathers in the 90s, the situation is just alarming. But we come to give you courage today, fellow Amazonians. We come to give you courage. The vice chairperson of the governing council, our own partner, Sang spoke, and the word was courage. The leader of our revolution, His Excellency Sisiko Ayoktabe, spoke to us. The word again is courage. And the key message our leaders keep passing through is that the darkest hour is always just the time when you're about to get free. We must not miss the glaring opportunity in our face in this generation. We must not miss the fact that this is the hour and this is the moment. We must not miss the fact that we were all called for this period, for this season, for one purpose only, to liberate our land of birth, Ambazonia. To liberate our land of birth, the land that God gave to our forefathers. Fellow Ambazonians, be courageous, if not for anything, for the confusion of your own day. You witnesses that every single thing your own day does just exposes them as a government that has lost track, doesn't know what to do, except for one thing that was handed over to them at independence, brutality. Be courageous because freedom has come. Without a doubt, more than 99% of Amazonians now consider themselves free. They now know that they have taken back the country and that the only responsibility left is to push out the occupier. We would like to state from the interim government that we are very proud of all of you Amazonians. We're so, so proud of you. 
courageous Ambazonians, determined Ambazonians. We're proud of you all, our freedom fighter, from the little child in that house, mud house in the village, to that old retired military general, colonel, sitting in their houses. I've talked to so many of our people. The president and almost all our leadership have been doing the same, and the message is one. Do not surrender. Do not surrender. You cannot give in to slavery again. We have conquered slavery. A people are free. They know they're free. And are willing to take it to the logical end. Fellow Ambazonians, this is a God-ordained struggle. This is a struggle that calls upon you and me calls upon you and I to use our intellect, to use our energy, and most importantly, to use the God-given courage so that our land eventually can be free. The only thing left for us to do is to eventually push out the occupier. And of course, you are doing great all of you in the homeland, you have made the governing of Ambazonia by the occupier almost impossible. We need to make it impossible. We must do that. Their brutality, unfortunately, has only produced one result against them. It has increased the courage and determination of our people. It has increased our a, a determination to fight through. It has strengthened our resolve. It has rallied our people to come together as one man and say enough is enough. The hate we have received over 56 years running, the brutality we have received, the rape, the maiming, the killing, just sent one message only to anybody who's got ears to listen and eyes to see that we have never been part of the illegal union called Cameroon. Fellow Amazonians, it is in recognition of the great strides we've made in this struggle that our leader, His Excellency Sisiko Ayoktabe, was invited to London as a guest speaker to come and speak on the situation of his people. You have heard the feedback that he made us proud, as any of you would imagine. He sold a case like you never believe. He spoke like a true warrior to many. We thank God for a leader who has taken the baton and is doing everything in his powers to make sure that our people are free. You heard the interview that he offered Radio France International. He said that Mr. Bias always had two choices. The right choice to dialogue or the choice of fighting. We are witnesses that Mr. Beard does not understand the language of dialogue. If you go back to the days of the Trapatite, if you go back to late last year when our leaders were negotiating with this criminal cabal in Yaoundé so that sanity can reign, and when you look at the situation now, when the only message coming out of Yaoundé for negotiation is arrest the leaders because we cannot negotiate. We are terrorists and terrorists don't negotiate. We are killers, we are vampires. All we need is the blood of um, Ambazonians. When you put all of this together, you can only thank God because our leader said, if Mr. Bia chooses the last option, which we continue to reject because it does not align the ideology and philosophy of our struggle, I, Sisiko Ayoktabe, 
will have no choice but to fight and liberate my people. Even if it means die, I would die for them. Fellow Amazonians, this is the hour of reckoning. The pain of our mothers and fathers, our grandmothers and grandfathers, our daughters and sons, our brothers and sisters, the pain of every single Amazonian living in a homeland is deep. What kind of an occupation force will not even respect the basic tenets of human rights? Our people are not safe wherever they are. In your houses, you're not safe. On the road, you are not safe. In schools, in churches, in farms, wherever. There's just one thing we must all remember. Freedom is not cheap. There's always a price to pay. But freedom always produces something that slavery can never give you. And it is for that reason that as I speak tonight on behalf of our people, the message is one simple message. Away with slavery, away. Slavery, we have conquered you. To federalists who go around singing and begging to be slaves, we have a message for you. France has La Republic as a slave. You now want us to become the second layer of slaves. What kind of human beings are you? And especially if you are leaders, how shameless can that be? Let us remember that this is a revolution. And in this revolution, the one thing we ask our people to stand strong and not move away from is the truth. Because only the truth shall set us free. And the simple truth we all know is that La Republique must live in Bazonia, whether they like it or not. So tonight, I spend time to say courage, fellow citizens of the Federal Republic of Amazonia. Courage. Do not fear anyone. Do not fear even the brutality of La Republic de Cameroon. But these are indeed like the last kids of a dying horse. These are the last days you will see in the occupier. We promise you that this is the hour, and this hour we cannot miss it. That is a very clear message from the interim government. We know post the conclave, you are people have been waiting to get the announcement of your first interim government. Take note, it's called an interim government. And of course, the wait continues. But this wait is continuing for all the right reasons. Patasan spoke about that. In the words of His Excellency Sisikwa Yoktari, this is something we cannot rush over it. This is the best opportunity for us to build a house again. And so our teams are all over the place, making sure that the best Amazonians will eventually be appointed leaders of the different cabinet positions that the conclave arrived at. It is important to remember that we cannot get this wrong. So His Excellency will be addressing the nation very soon and you will be getting the big good news. But let's allow these processes right through naturally so that we are able to consult and ensure that those that eventually sign up to become public servants 
to become your servants in the different portfolios that will be put in your hands. Well, the Amazonians that will never compromise the unity of our people, that would never compromise the resolve of our people, that would never compromise the destiny of our people. It's very important that whoever gets appointed is one that is not only very loyal, but one that is bitterly committed to the struggle and very competent. I liked the Romano nation that not everybody can be appointed. There will be those that will be the forerunners. Those of you who dream to be in those positions, you have a God-ordained assignment. You have yourself as technical advisors for those called upon the Hikarian task of moving a nation to prayer. You will have to submit yourself and, sub and support them. We will not allow Ambazonians competing against themselves. This I cannot compete against that I. We are one. We must stay like that. Cooperation is the mission. And while we continue to press on cooperation and unity, we we'll like to emphasize from the interim government that the tensions that we have among some of our groups they can be overcome. The attacks that some of us continue to take onto different platforms to divide us, those attacks are counter-revolutionary. In some revolutions, and I'll use an example, the ANC, you will be, dis you'll be disciplined and sometimes with extreme measures, if you know what I mean. The Ambazonian revolution prays that all our people understand that unity is never one-sided. That we all have a role to play. And most importantly, the leaders of our different movements, the leaders of our different countries in the context of the diaspora and the leaders back at home, you all have to be very responsible. And you must be accountable for all your actions. You have to remember that when you take the rostrum on behalf of the Amazonian people, every action of yours reflects the will of the Amazonian people. And if there's a pronouncement or an action you undertake, which does not speak the overwhelming mind and voice of a determined people. That is as good as a treasonable offense. So from the interim government, we urge our people to understand that we can only have one Ambazonian government at a time. And the collective masses of our people have spoken. We ask all to lay down the struggle for power. His Excellency Sisiko Ayoktabe is the unity candidate for a struggle. We call upon all to rally behind him so that we can face one common enemy. We can face one common onion people. We can face one common killer one common raper, one common destroyer of the Amazonian people. And that is Mr. Beer and his occupying forces. This is a strong appeal. We will continue to do that because we understand that the journey to Boya will be quicker when we are united than when we are divided. So yes, the consultations for the most united 
interim government continue. But at some point, we will then have the coalition of the willing. The coalition of the willing. And that will be the melting point of leaders who have decided to put the differences aside and walk towards the common good of this struggle. I would not want to re-emphasize or overemphasize on that point again. But let our people understand that your government will be coming soon. It will be the right government. It will be made of the right people. And they will serve you diligently and they will take you to Boyer under the leadership of His Excellency Sisi Kwa Yoktan. A restoration council will then get into the process of passing laws and setting the ground so that as we move into Boyer, we must have democratic structures in place that ensure that we have a government that is voted by the people, that is entreable to the people, and defends the people of a nation. Next, a big announcement. Call upon you to listen and listen good. Tuesday, the 21st of November, 2017, marks the first anniversary of one guest, the Coffin Revolution, the Coffin Revolution that was launched in a very unique and, permit me to use the word, dramatic style by the one and only Mancho BBC, who was formally announced and recognized at the last conclave as the official face of the Ambazonian revolution, of the revolution to free Ambazonia, its land and its people. The 21st of November, which next week on Friday, marks exactly one year since Mancho BBC listened to the call from God and took the world and particularly Ambazonians by surprise. Not forget that that was a month after the lawyers had gone out and demanded an end to the oppression and suppression of our people. Do not forget that that was the 21st of November when our own very part Tassan, had called for a teacher's strike to commence on that day in solidarity with the lawyers. Little did Pata Sang know that while he was calling for a sit-in strike, while he kept pressing on the message, keep your children at home, we don't want anybody on the road. And while some of us that have been leading our people and the revolution in many facets were very worried and did not think about keeping children at home and really only wanted everybody to get onto the streets so that we could vent their anger, many listened to the call of our teachers and stayed at home. Teachers stayed at home, our school kids stayed at home. But Mancho BBC was born to the struggle to liberate his people. Mancho BBC unimaginable. He appeared with that coffin. That coffin. That coffin. And I remember one phrase that still touches me to this day. He said, I have bought this coffin with my own money. It is my size, but I must come out and speak. And speaking would mean I will be killed, so be it. But I will not live another day to see my people suffer. In his last court appearance, Mancho BBC did it again. 
We turn to the occupiers and said, Let my people go. Let my people go. My people have suffered for too long. You have incarcerated innocent, harmless Ambazonians for too long. If their blood is what you are so hungry for, I, Mancho, I give my life. Kill me and let all, all Ambazonians, fathers, boys, school kids, teachers, in your terrible detention cells, release all of them and kill me, if that will make you happy. Comrade Mancho, on behalf of the Ambazonian people, we celebrate you. We salute you, soldier of our revolution and leader of the Ambazonian people. We take a pledge. We will never and never and never ever betray you. We promise you, we promise you that Ambazonia will be free and it will not be too long. War be tight, La Republic de Cameroon. If Mancho BBC's has a headache of Mancho BBC's body, physique, has any form of deformation that comes from the brutality of the terrorist forces. On the 22nd of September, our mothers came out with one message, free our leader and all our people. You killed and maimed and wrecked. On the 1st of October, you did sin. His Excellency Siku has asked me to tell the Ambazonian people that tomorrow, Monday, the 20th of November, is a special ghost town. That ghost town, we will have to do it for Mancho Bebesi. No shop should be opened. No office. No school. The whole of our land, even though still under occupation, must send a message in respect of the great Mancho by ensuring that tomorrow's ghost town is one of the greatest. It must be respected by all, all our people. You've always done that. We've got no doubt you would do that in all your our villages and all our towns. On the 21st of November, teachers would have stayed out of class for exactly one year. The revolution, the coffin revolution, that gave birth to the catapult revolution, would have been one year. We ask all Ambazonians to get into prayers and medication. Prayers and meditation. That was a special call from Patasang. Prayers and meditation. Let's pray for a God-given struggle. Let's pray for Mancho BBC. And as you pray for Mancho BBC, for God to continue to give him more grace and more courage. For God to continue to fortify him. For God to give him health, good health, so that we carry him someday, soon, on our shoulders as we get into our capital, Boya. When you do that, you'll be praying for Senator Penn Terrence. You'll be praying for Comrade Asa Patrick Ndango. You'll be praying for the men of God, the doctors and professors, the farmers, the business people, for all Ambazonians that were illegally kidnapped by the terrorist government in Yaoundé and are currently held in different detention centers under very deplorable conditions, some of them in bunkers. You will be praying and meditating for the hundreds and hundreds of our people that remain missing on account of this war. 
We are praying that the good Lord will make sure that someday soon these will be reunited with their families. You will be praying for the thousands and thousands of Amazonians that unfortunately are now refugees in Nigeria and other countries, living under very terrible conditions, sleeping in the open air, not knowing where breakfast, lunch, and supper will come from, bathing in the open, going to the toilet in the near bushes, and only God knows. Fellow Amazonians, let the 21st be a special, special day. You will be getting special messages across this week, which is due to the Central BBC Celebration Week. This will be a week where the interim government and all our movements will reach out to people to share our history, to share the history of our struggle, and most importantly, to give our people a picture of where we're going. Because we, as we move into Boya, we're moving into a land of freedoms, a land of liberties, a land where there's milk and honey, a land where God and Allah exist, a land where there'll be increase and promotion, a land where people will not only be responsible and accountable, but they'll dare to dream again because government will create that in environment so that we can build a country together, make mistakes together, own up for them together, and just make Ambazonia the best place anybody would want to visit when they visit Africa. This it will be a special moment for you, you and I to reflect very deeply and ask ourselves questions, intriguing questions, on what we have done so far as Ambazonians, as ordinary people, to support the people's revolution, to take people power to where it is today. This will be a moment when you listening to me will ask yourself, have you gone into your closet? Pick out those beautiful things. You can buy some of our refugees in the jail with. Not just the things you've not been wearing, the things you love so much. Have you done that? What about those things you have not even put on for six to 12 months? Can you put aside your rents for just one month? Can you put aside money you've been using for what you consider luxurious expenditures over the month? Just so that. A woman who gave birth today in Nigeria could have medication. A people who moved into Nigeria with bullets in their hands, bullets in their legs, could have a doctor to take care of them. From the interim government, call upon Ambazonians. This is the greatest time for us to unite like one man and show love. Let's show love to humanity. Before we wait for help from outside, let's help our own people. We would like to use this moment to thank all Amazonians. All Amazonians in the homeland. All Amazonians in the diaspora. Who continue to sacrifice so much. To make sure that the interim government can move forward who continue to sacrifice so much to make sure that our refugees in Nigeria can have bread to eat, can have a place they can call shelter, can have water to drink. We want to thank all our people who continue to make sure that the hundreds of our people that continue to receive medication from the brutality of Yaoundé in hospitals in Ambazonia, continue to get those administered by medical practitioners. We want to use this moment and salute you for your bravery, your courage, and your support. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much. We ask Ambazonians to take a week off, take two weeks off, take a month off, and get into any of our refugee camps, especially those of you in the medical profession, social workers, and just give us some time to support humanity. Our people are in a dying need of help. They need us so much. To those of you who continue to support the hundreds of our people who have been terrible detention centers of the occupier, who continue to make sure that they have food, that they have a prayers to put it on, and continue to believe that we are with them. We thank you so much. Family members and friends who visited compatriots and some of these detention centers in the state in Pondinge have specifically asked the interim government to thank you, but equally to let you know that so much still needs to be done. And so to any Amazonian who still hasn't done a thing, we want to challenge you today, please stand up and do the right thing. If any of you still doubted the resolve, of the more than 99% of Amazonian people that we have taken back and learn, you must know that there would never be a union with La Republic again. You must know that Amazonia is already free. You must know that the brutality of Yaoundé and their confusion has been fired by the determination and resolve of our people. Do not be a doubt in Thomas. You must know that history never lies, and history will be a judge to all of us. We have spoken to many men of God. We have spoken to so many elders of our struggle, people in the late 80s and 90s, spoken to the young, spoken to so many of us. This determination is unquenchable. Nobody can quench it. So federalists who still want to be slaves, you know what to do. You can go over and see the asylum in the Republic to Cameroon. And to nationalists, it's too late. It's too late. So you join us in telling unionists that it's too late. But we've taken back a country. To parliamentarians and senators, the interim government would like to sign a word of thanks to His Excellency Nijan Froni, all parliamentarians and CPF that still had not listened to the people's call, but made a statement by not attending the plenary session with the occupiers. We thank you for taking that step. That is the right thing. I would like to tell you from the interim government that that falls short of the ultimate expectation of the Amazonian people. When you sit with the occupier, when you sit with the killer, when you sit with those monsters, you are signing a license for the occupier to get honorable way by killed. You are signing with occupier that the genocide must continue and all your colleagues are listening to the call of our people and the through the 1st of October should be massacred. You are signing occupier and telling them, kill all teachers and all lawyers. Because these that do not want to continue to see the enslavement of their people are, are our enemies because we like ourselves, like the packages we receive, we hate seeing Ambazonia free, and we will want Ambazonians to continue to be slaves under the Republic to Cameroon. Let us let us make this abundantly clear to all senators and all parliamentarians of Amazonian extraction, those of the SDF and those of the CPP. The presidents of 1954 
set by our forebearers when they moved out of the Inugu House of Assembly without a consult that led to Ambazonians enjoying serve rule from 1954 to 1961. Real terms is the only thing we expect from you and nothing short of that. You have overstayed your welcome and your betrayal of the vote is now a slap in the face the hundreds of people who blocked eyes from the ground murdered with a bullet of the fire. We would like to advise you withdraw. Withdraw from that house. There will be no cosmetic solutions to free Ambazonia. Ambazonia can only be free when the right things are done. And we need to be very clear that the people's representative have no choice. You cannot go against the voice of the Ambazonian people. That would not be allowed. We ask you to withdraw. Withdraw so that this government can understand that the end has finally been realized by the collective resolve of all our people because we've always insisted that every single Ambazonian has a role to play and must play that role. Parliamentarians, senators of the SDF and the CPDN that have not resigned, have not withdrawn, have not marked an end with the illegal union with the occupier. The blood of our people remains on your head. You continue to stay in that house. We would not like to continue to push on this. The Amazonian people have been calling and they continue to call. Do the right thing in the interest of our people. Fellow Amazonians, we equally called out of the con cliff for volunteers from amongst our ranks. There's so much work to do and not a lot enough hands. We ask all Ambazonians to find something to do to make this journey to free our people quicker. There's something you can do. Rather than sit in the comfort of your office or house and criticize actions, selling after the market, get into the department where God gave you an enablement, make contribution so that when decisions have been made, they are refined decisions. They are decisions with the list of errors. They are decisions that will first strike the liberation of our people. Don't wait to be called. Call yourself into function and play the role God had ordained you to play. Do it not for recognition, but do it for the suffering masses of our, of our people. This is something we must all do. We continue to appeal to you that if you do not know how to come to it, wherever you are, there is a leader. Talk to that leader. That leader will give you responsibility. As I close, I would like Mr. Paul Bill to reflect on what is happening in Zimbabwe. I would like the cabal in Yaoundé, the cabinet, Mr. Paul Bia, to reflect on what is happening in Zimbabwe. I would like the security forces of the Republic of Cameroon to reflect on what is happening in Zimbabwe and ask themselves some very soul-searching questions. 
have I been doing justice to my own family? Have I been doing justice to my own family? Have I been doing justice to the name of my family? Have I been doing justice to God? You have the answer. But we would like to caution and advise anybody in the Republic of Cameroon who is deployed to come and kill me and kill them, who is deceived that bullets can stop the reserve of our people. Matthew, we have our intelligence everywhere. We know everything every one of you has done. We know every single one of you that has shot and killed Amazonians. We promise you that you will face the full might of the law. That will not be for too long. And when you're doing that, you'll be doing it alone. The commander who sent you after being bribed with a few pieces of silver, the minister, delegate, minister, or their commander-in-chief, Mr. Paul Biel, who sent you, they will not be there with you. Justice will be served. And you know what justice will be To murderers and killers. To the military in Zimbabwe, the interim government of the people of Amazonia, we salute you. We congratulate you. We celebrate you. We ask that the world's noble prize be given to none other than the military of the people of Zimbabwe. You are true defender of the people. You are true champions of the, of, of the Zimbabwean people. You have done, don't think about, you've done something unimaginable, especially to those that thought that Africa was not civil, civilized enough. Thank you, Zimbabwean military. The Ambazonian people celebrate so much. We honor you so much. Yaoundi Shem. Mothers of La Republic of Cameroon, Shem. Rapers of La Republic of Cameroon, Shem. Refugee manufacturers of Yaoundi, Shem. Take a leave of the book of the Zimbabweans. We would like to remind you, as very civilized people again, that after all wars are fought, solutions that pave the way forward always come from the dialogue table. Yaoundé has shown its indiscipline. Yaoundé continues to show it can never be trusted. I would like to continue to caution Yaoundé that of violence. While our resolve remains non-violent, you must know that our people are becoming very restless and very impatient. You must know that not long from now we will not be able to stop the Amazonian people. And you must know that for every single Amazonian killed or every single person killed in Ambazonia by whoever. Your blood is squarely in your hands, Mr. Paul Bia, and your inner circle. Because you have chosen destruction over constructionism. You have chosen intimidation and murder over dialogue. And you must be very ashamed of yourself that hundreds and hundreds of Amazonians have been killed in cold blood, armless Amazonians. And your government in its characteristic hate has not even pretended in the name of the government of the people 
to send messages of condolences to our people, to our mothers and fathers, to our community that are bruised, battered, and very angry. You stood in your parliament and observed a minute of silence for the soldiers you killed, you murdered. You send messages of condolences to their families. But because the Amazonians are slaves, because they're not human beings, because they're animals, dogs and rats, you can kill, you can slaughter at any time you want. The men of our people that have been killed means nothing to you. The message is clear. At the least, we hope you have read the handwriting on the wall. Unionist, we hope you have read the handwriting on the wall. As Ambazonian nationalist, we can only say thank you to Yaoundé. That's been the message that the leaders have been trying to share for the last 56 years. But that message has been very clear now. And all our people now know. Thank you, Amnesty International. Thank you, United Nations High Commission for Refugees. Thank you, International Crisis Group. Thank you, the government of Nigeria. Thank you, all our friendly countries, for all the work you're doing behind the scenes. Fellow Amazonians, we will not announce game until they become inevitable. The diplomatic community does not like the language where you announce things while they're still in process. As soon as you announce good news, you destroy it. <coughs> Excuse me. We ask the people to be patient. We thank you for the trust you showed Skakuf, for the trust you showed the governing council, and by the trust you are showing interim government. We assure you that we are not sleeping. We assure you we work in 24 7. And we assure you that we are making great strides. So remain focused, remain resolute. You have the responsibility to make Ambazonia ungovernable. You have the responsibility to make sure that the ideals of the Coffin Revolution, those of the Catapult Revolution, continue. And that is when teachers caught, where schools boycott until Ambazonia children are able to in a position where they can acquire the right kind of education and make them free citizens in the 21st century. We ask all our people not to get distracted by the diabolic acts of the foreigners in our midst, by the diabolic acts of the PPD and corrupt ones in a mist. We cannot allow schools to go on while our streets remain heavily militarized. Our schools remain heavily militarized. While our people remain unsafe. While our people, Mancha, BBC, and the rest remain in jail. For these reasons, the school boycott continue, and it will continue until every requirement set by the interim government, by the Australian people. The ghost towns remain known every Monday, unquestionably, a tool that is very biting. The boycott remains. Boycotting everything 
la republique. We continue to pay allegiance only to the chiefs and fundams that respect our revolution and to leaders chosen by you. None of you must go to any court, gendarme station, or administrative office of the occupied. Do not be worried about questions like are we going to get ID and passports? An administration that will start delivering services to you? Answer definitely yes. When government is announced, you will not see a miracle the next day. But there will be very clear steps to show that we have finally taken over the full administration of our nation. Ambazonians' freedom is sweet. Ambazonians' liberty is sweet. Liberty is divine. Liberty assures you of peace. Liberty assures you of security. Liberty assures you of a caring government that will protect you. Liberty assures you of a government whose decisions will be presented. Decisions that will be sanctioned by people. Liberty assures you of a government that is accountable. One that will never allow corruption to become the fabric of our society. One that will never, never allow a few criminals to hijack a country resources. Liberty means that the resources of the Amazonian people will be used by Amazonians to develop Amazonia. Liberty means that Amazonians that want to be business people will have a government that will create an enabling environment that will create the nangas of the kilo billionaires of Amazonia that were destroyed by this criminal cabal in Nandi. Liberty assures us that only the best of the best will be in our military. Only the best of the best will be in our military. And only the best of the best will be in our hospitals as doctors and in our public offices as administrators. Liberty is good. Mental liberation we have achieved and physical liberation we will achieve. So from the interim government tonight, we say courage. Do not lose hope. For we are so close. We are so close to pushing out. When your minister of defense announced, they will announce the formation of the Amazonian army, the Amazonian police, Amazonian military, Amazonian security forces, those are things that we must have. Yes, so much work has already been done. When the army finally becomes the defense line of the Amazonian people. We will announce this formally. And the responsibility will be to continue to defend modern life. Now your responsibility is to ensure that all our neighborhoods, all our villages, all our towns, all our homes, all our mothers, fathers, grandparents, sisters, are defended at all costs. We know the price is huge, but we must continue. We must continue until the occupier is a dangerous food. From the State House, we would like to thank you for listening tonight and encourage you to stay the course because we are doing justice to humanity, 
and we are moving in line with the divine call from God. Without a doubt, Ambassadian people will be free. Without a doubt, our beautiful, rich land of Ambazonia will be free. Without a doubt, the government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia will sit in Boya very soon with us to take Ambazonia to the next level as the newest nation in Africa, the newest nation in the world, on a developmental trajectory that many will describe as Fellow Ambazonians, be courageous. Thank you for listening. God bless Ambazonia. God bless the courageous people of Ambazonia. And God bless the struggle. I'm Milton Tucker, spokesperson for the Governing Council, as we await the announcement of our internal government. Thank you. We have Oh